Welcome to the second episode of Dial a Dietitian. Today we're going to be talking with Jess English from the UK. Jess has a private practice in the UK and I can't wait to share more of her story with you all today. So let's jump into the interview. So today I'm with Jess from Brighton in England in the UK. And so Jess, thank you so much for joining us today. And go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourself and what inspired you to become a dietitian. Hi, yes, yeah, so thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so what inspired me to be a dietitian? Um, well, I went back to uni quite late in life. Like I went back to uni at 25. I'd done loads of jobs beforehand i'd uh, work bar um i've worked on tour catering for bands and then i wanted to travel so i went and became cabin crew for emirates and went and lived in dubai like i did loads of stuff um and but always super interested in diet and nutrition and science and i tested um my ex at the times um dad who was big up in nutrition and just asking loads of questions about things i was interested in i was vegan i got migraines i had a ton of that i was annoying him <laughs> Um, but he just basically told me that there was this job I could do that was a dietitian and I should look into it and stop annoying him. <laughs> and so I did. And uh, yeah, I looked into it and thought, yeah, this is definitely for me. Did some shadowing, went back and um, went back to go back to college to redo my A-levels. Um, did an access course, went back to uni. Yeah, and it was um, kind of combined everything I love into one thing. Um, and you always wanted to help people. So yeah, it's kind of definitely the job for me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah that's, that's so interesting <laughs> yeah that's so interesting hearing kind of how um you had kind of all these little things that kind of led you to nutrition eventually mm. yeah definitely loads of little bits and it just all centered in on the fact that i could do this job and it's like, that sounded amazing so yeah i quite liked it good great so, so um since you became a dietitian what sorts mm -hmm. of jobs or projects have you taken on um, so I worked for a year straight out of uni in clinical, so I was in the NHS at um, a local hospital here, so doing elderly care, trauma, surgical, oncology, like a real mix of everything. I assume it's the same for all of us when we go into clinical, um, and some weight management and specialist weight management. And um, then I went on to work as a public health dietitian for a local non-profit, so working um, with schools and with parents and families as a yeah as a weight management specialist dietitian, running groups and um, cooking eat sessions and one to ones. I left that role at the end of last year to launch freelance, so start, start my private practice, um, where I do one to one and virtual clinics and cookery workshops. I've kind of coached the cookery teacher I used to work with, um, and I run a workshop with her to kind of love busting nutrition myths and kind of helping people work all the information out there and find the, 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 the actual science to it and kind of translate it into food and practical things. So I love seeing people be able to learn what we just learned into some food. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> But yeah, so just love um, helping people turn that kind of information into food that I really enjoy, practical information. But yeah, for me, yeah, I was just qualified for a few years and that's what I kind of squeeze in. Yeah, that's wonderful. Great. Um, and so what excites you most about your work in nutrition? Um, so what excites me the most about it, um, it has to have been kind of rediscovering the non-diet, health at every size, intuitive eating stuff again. Um, we've got a, a, lecture, a lecture from Lucy Afromore, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, at university towards the end of uni. So I suppose kind of shows everything that there was out there in the world of nutrition, which was really great. Um, and I think coming to the end of my time working as a weight management dietitian with kids and families and just seeing how affected the kids were by their weight and um, how it made them feel about themselves, I yeah, started to look into non-diet and intuitive eating and stuff. And yeah, that just really, really inspired me to go forward with that again, kind of reignited my sort of passion for helping people and diet and nutrition. Um, I know it's not for everybody, but um, changing my practice definitely made me much happier. And I, I think it's um, 
and it made my clients much happier as well. So yeah, that's definitely what's been exciting me. Yeah, that's really wonderful. And the um, it that like intuitive eating and everything, it seems to be kind of a big trend in mm. dietetics with you know health professionals recently. I've been noticing it, I feel like, in the past probably year or so, a lot of people kind of putting a little bit more of an emphasis on that um, and seeing some results with their clients too. Mm, yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely having a moment again, which is, which is nice. Yeah. Definitely. Great. So um, if someone is thinking about becoming a dietitian, what would be your advice for them? And then also maybe can you touch a little bit on the process of becoming a dietitian in the UK? Because I know it mm -hmm. differs slightly from um, here in the United States. Yeah, I love hearing about how the US and Australia, the kind of the internet's opened up to me all the different ways people, different things people have to do to become a dietitian, all the internships yeah. and stuff. And it's quite similar, but it's, it's also really, really different. So that's right. Mm -hmm. but so um, in terms of advice for people who might be thinking they want to do it, I'd say probably what a lot of other people would say um, as well, kind of go out and get as much experience as you can in the field, kind of. Do I just ask people and ask loads of questions? Um, get I don't say get any experience um, in food prep and delivery in terms of jobs. I know that we were told that would definitely help with our application for university. Um, and in terms of work and volunteering, look at maybe ways that you'd be helping people as well. So jobs in the community. Um, I, I really love being able to volunteer. Um, I volunteered right through college and university at, um, at food banks, at food redistribution places, um, places that were um, doing free cook and eat sessions and nutrition sessions for kids and families or people who couldn't otherwise afford it. And that was brilliant. And, you know, not only to help them, but it, it definitely helped me realise that's what I wanted to do as a career. Um, and it really, really went towards me getting into university and getting the role that I did. But yeah, so get as much experience as you can. And I know it's quite hard now. I don't know how it is over there, but um, to get into hospitals and actually see how that works is um, it's a lot more difficult than it seems like it was when I started. It's really hard to get um, just behind the door, kind of understandably, I suppose, with confidentiality. But get experience in hospitals and see what's involved in chemical as well. You know, I absolutely loved it. I don't do it now, but I did really enjoy it. Um, but it's really full on, as you, as you must know yourself. And um, most people aren't quite prepared for it if they've not seen it already. So if you've got a chance to do that before you put the money into going to university, then that's definitely something I recommend. And um, so in terms of what it involves being a dietitian in the UK then, um, so it's changed a little bit in the last couple of years, but I know that when I started you, you have to have your um, your basic sort of GCSE. I don't know what the equivalent is over in the, in the US, but... Um, and um, then A levels in at least a couple of science subjects, um, uh, biology, chemistry, that sort of thing, and your maths. Um, or you can do an access course, which is what I did, which kind of condensed your A levels into one really solid boot camp of the year. So you've got this condensed qualification. And then you do your four year qualification at university. So there's only a few that do them in the UK. And um, I went to, to one in Surrey. Um, and so, yeah, we do three years and, and it's at least nine months, I think, of clinical. So on placement, yeah, two, three months since and one, one month since. So, yeah, so six, seven months um, on placement and it's totally unpaid. You're working for the NHS. So I suppose it's a little bit like your internships. Right. You get, yeah, you go in and get experience on the ground and pay two rents for a few months. It's really expensive. <laughs> but um, get loads of experience. Yeah. And then... Um, yeah, and then you you come back to university for your final year and then get get sent out to find your, find your first job. <laughs> Probably one of the places you did your experience at, which is kind of cool. Great. Thank you for all that advice and information, too. I'm sure will be interesting for um, any, like, students who are in the United States who are kind of curious about how it works in the UK, too. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely changed here in terms of fees as well. I don't know what it's like where you guys are, but um, up until, I think, two years ago, it was free. Like, you could get a scholarship sort of thing, a bursary. So mine was totally paid for. All four years were paid for, whereas I think now it's gone up to full price fees because um, there was a lack of dietitians when I started, whereas now I think they're, they're filling their quotas. Oh. But um, again, I don't know if that's going to change soon or not. Who knows with the NHS? <laughs> right, right. 
Great. Um, well, tell us a little bit more about where can we find you on social media and then tell us about any projects or any other things you want us to know about. Uh, so I've been really lax with social media the last week or so. I've been um, doing a lot of business stuff, which is really dope. But um, so my social media, I'm at, it's level.up.nutrition on Instagram. Um, my Facebook's Level Up Nutrition UK. And I mean, I just uh, share sort of in things that I find interesting <laughs> bits and bobs. I need to be better at social media. Um, my blog posts, um, I blog on my site, which is levelupnutrition.co.uk. Um, in terms of things that I'm offering, I'm developing an intuitive eating package, which should hopefully be out kind of um, summerish. Things crossed. <laughs> it all goes to plan. Otherwise, I um, yeah, offer virtual services, all kinds of details of those are available on my website if people wanted to have a look. Yeah. Great. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jess. This has been really interesting, and I'm sure people are going to love hearing um, everything that you had to say today. So thank you so much for sharing with us. And we will see the rest of you guys next time. Next week on Dial a Dietitian. What excites you most about your work in nutrition? Everything. Um, I, I just, honestly, I just love nutrition because it's so um, like omnipresent. It is everywhere and it's in everything. I was thinking about this because you let me know the question beforehand. And as I was thought, thinking about it, I was like, it's kind of...